and why don't you empower yourself and don't mm-hmm. need them and do it yourself? How, Sway? Take, you take a few steps back. To go you ain't got the answers, up. man. You ain't uh, got the answers. Uh, I, you ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers, Sway. Royal family, today on Passport Kings, I'm counting down the top 10 black dudes that do got all the answers, Sway. Engage. I'm Rockland. I travel the globe for leisure, exploration, and education about different cultures. Join me, and you too can be royalty. This is Passport King. Welcome aboard, abroad. All right, so my people have a hard time shouting out each other sometimes. Some black folks will put a lot of unnecessary burden on each other before they give somebody the props that they deserve. It's like, if this dude invented walking on water, people will be like, he should have taught people on the Titanic how to do that so they would have been able to save their lives. And they would say he's actually evil because he had the ability to save lives, but he didn't show these other people how to do it. I'm not that way. I won't hold certain people to a standard that I don't hold everybody else to. Floors and all, these top 10 people have risen to the top of their industry and many times without any support from their own community. And when I look at them, I think of the greatness that I could be one day because being a doer instead of a talker is an amazing feat within itself. Because if a person is always talking about I should or I could or we should or we could but never have no attainable plan in place, What they need to do is sit back, be quiet, and listen to what the doers have to say about it. And these are the greatest 10 people that I'm impressed with. And they do it with style. These people have a wealth of knowledge on their particular subjects. I can listen to them talk all day, but more importantly, they inspire me to get up, get out, and get something. And here's my list. Dr. Sebi is a pathologist, biochemist, and herbalist. He came to the U.S. from Honduras and is on a mission to heal humanity. As it happens, he's been curing some of the most deadliest diseases on the planet for almost 30 years. AIDS, cancer, diabetes, lupus, and epilepsy are just a few of the ailments he has completely reversed. He was sued by the city of New York because they said he was false advertising. Guess what? He won. Boyce D. Watkins is an author, economist, political analyst and social commentator. A scholar at Syracuse University and the Barbara Jordan Institute for Policy Research. He wrote financial advice books including Financial Lovemaking 101, Black American Money, and What If George Bush Were a Black Man. Watkins is an advocate for education, economic empowerment, and social justice, and has made regular appearances on The Breakfast Club, CNN, MSNBC, BET, NPR, Essence Magazine, The Time Joyner Morning Show, and a frequent contributor to TheGrio.com. He also makes loads of YouTube videos so we could get our financial minds right. But he also comments on important other social issues. He seems like an all-around cool guy. Additionally, his financial Juneteenth website now has a course on being a boss along with former record exec and entrepreneur Dame Dash. Together they are getting the message out about being a boss and controlling your own destiny. This guy is an intellectual powerhouse. Eight is Kanye West. He's a producer and songwriter who I listen to because he obviously takes his destiny into his own hands. He's the epitome of what it looks like when you don't take no for an answer and you stand up to people who think they can put you in a box where they think you should stay. He became popular from being a producer at Rockefeller Records many years ago, but since then he has become a hip-hop and fashion phenomenon. He gets a lot of criticism because he speaks his mind and doesn't always find the politically correct words to voice his opinion, but that's why I like him. He married and had kids with one of the biggest names in reality TV, and although that may not have been my personal choice if I was of his stature, I have no right to judge his decisions, plus he seems very happy with that choice. But more importantly, Kanye West put the pedal to the metal in his career and he's taking it as far as it'll go. You can tell he works hard and is always passionate about his work and that's a winning formula in my book. Number 7, Puffy, P. Diddy, Sean Combs. 
the creator of Bad Boy Records, Sean John Clothing, and Sirac Liquor and Revolt TV. Puff obviously has the answers when it comes to becoming and staying successful. When he got fired from Uptown Records, something that would crush most people who had worked so hard to get an A&R position in, I could just imagine him saying to himself, this is not the last time they will hear the name Sean Combs. And boy oh boy was he right. It's not if you get knocked down, it's about if you pick yourself back up. Puff got up and has been swinging haymakers ever since. You could dislike his music, his clothes, his corporate decisions, and his attitude. I don't, but you can. And that will still not take away from the fact that in a world of a lot of losers and few winners, Puffy has won and I have a feeling he will continue to keep winning. Take that, take that. Number six, Dr. Claude Anderson. All I have to say is group economics. In his course called Powernomics, Dr. Anderson teaches us how to practice capitalism in our society. He offers black America specific principles, strategies, and activities to use to own and control resources to produce group wealth, become more self-sufficient, and economically competitive. Dr. Anderson built Maryland's largest seafood producing facility and operated it for seven years. Dr. Anderson is president of the Harvest Institute, a think tank that does research, policy development, education and advocacy to increase the self-sufficiency of black America. Former President Jimmy Carter appointed Anderson as the federal chairman for a commission of governors of Southeast states. When it comes to group economics for black people, Anderson has all the answers, Sway. Five, Tariq Nasheed. I started keeping up with Tariq's show after the second episode of the Mac Lessons Radio. The game was awesome, but it was the straightforward social commentary that got me hooked on his show. Since then, he has evolved into a guy I know for waking up more young people to the sins of white supremacy than I've ever heard of. He created the phenomenon called Hidden Colors and its sequels, and that has motivated and changed many black people's lives in the way that they look at themselves. When you tune in, what you get is education and entertainment with no filters. The younger generations that listen to him will know that it's cool to be smart and there's no shame in being articulate when you speak. And they might learn how to get some doms while they edit. Number four is Floyd Mayweather. What? Yeah, that's right, Floyd. Floyd wins in the ring, in the business of boxing, and in the arena of branding. Who do you know that doesn't either love or hate Floyd passionately? If you ever looked at WWE, you know that a reaction in any form is better than no reaction at all. Floyd has mastered his craft, and it doesn't hurt that he also trains harder than most and finds ways to win when he fights. I don't know about y'all, but whatever industry I'm in, I want to be the best at it, and numbers don't lie. Floyd Mayweather is the best boxer of his era, which at the end of the day is the only thing that really counts. Number three, Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton puts in work. Al gets up and hits the streets. Sharpton shines a spotlight on social injustices. I've heard many people say that he's only doing it for his own personal gain, but guess what? It's better that some police brutality or some racist BS be brought to the national headlines instead of page six of some, some local newspaper. Al Sharpton is the man with the flashlight. When someone is doing something that they know they're not supposed to be doing and they try to cover it up, my man Al Sharpton will come bring national attention to it and that's why so many people hate him. What's done in the dark will come to the light and Al and the National Action Network will be there to see that your dirty deeds are set ablaze. He's also a master at organizing people to get up off their asses and let it be known that we didn't like the way someone was treated. A lot of people don't like Al, but I bet the minute something racist or some police brutality happened to one of your kids and you're trying to get national attention and no one's listening, I bet you'll pick up the phone and call Al Sharpton. Number two, Barack Obama. How do you be black and become the president of a country that was built on racism? Then win a second time. I'll tell you how, by having the answers, Sway. People who criticize Obama, mainly those that don't vote anyway, say that he was chosen by corrupt banksters and the plutocrat elite class who control this and many other countries. So my question is, why pick him? Why didn't they just come pick you, hater? Why? Because he's a winner, that's why. Yes. I believe in government corruption, but I also think Obama won the presidency fair and square, both times. He put together an unmatchable team that knows how to win elections. Most people can't put together a team that knows how to win fantasy football. Obama set a new standard for black people. He said, when I grow up, I'm going to become president of the United States. And unlike 99% of the people who say this also, he actually pulled it off. And on top of that, he's the best president this country ever had. Number one, 
Neil deGrasse Tyson, the ultimate in education and inspiration. Shout outs to Bronx Science. My hometown has produced greatness a second time. Neil is an astrophysicist, cosmologist, author, and science communicator. Since 1996, he's been Frederick P. Rose, director of the Hayden Planetarium in New York City. The center is part of the Museum of Natural History, where Tyson founded the Department of Astrophysics in 1997. I love to travel. Why not travel to the final frontier? The way Neil talks about science is magical. He has an uncanny way of understanding in this world from the smallest atoms on earth to space stations and galaxies far far away i could listen to him talk for hours but more importantly he gets things done he's spoken to congress about the importance of science and gave us the positive financial and beneficial motive on why exploring space has changed our lives as we know it neil is my guy and when it comes to everything that really matters in this void that we call the universe he has all the answers way yo did you agree with my list let me know leave some uh comments in the comment section below and while you're down there don't forget to like and subscribe to my page if you haven't done that already also follow me on facebook and follow me on twitter and also come to www.passportkings.com so i can always hook you up with the latest information i know about in this exciting travel filled world this was my list of my favorite black people that inspire me. I'm sure you have your own list, and I don't mind if you leave them in the comments below. I would love to read them. That's my list, and they're putting their life, intelligence, and a lot of times their freedom on the line to do the things that they do, and say the things that they say. And that's what I want y'all to do, because that is inspiring. Be inspiring, like a king, a passport king. I'll talk to y'all next time. Peace.